everybody. I'm very sick, but we're doing this stream anyway because we got a lot of great stuff to talk about. I want to thank everybody for wishing me well yesterday. I really appreciated it. You guys are all so nice. And um, this it, it sucks. I feel bad for anybody who else who is, has a cold. All right. I've got my little almonds here in my, in my pachaco cup from Disney Epcot from the Japanese Pavilion. They're making me feel good. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. We're going to have a great time anyway. Sick schmick. Who cares, man? We're going to uh, discuss some really great stuff. Thank you, Rise of the Vacation. I've never, I've never seen you in the chat before. I love it. Thank you for your generosity as well. Hey, Mikey. Welcome back. Hey, Zach. Welcome back. So nice to see so many of you. Uh, the sick emoji's getting a lot of use today. All right. So, I'm glad you're excited, Seb. I'm kind of excited about Superman, too. I do have Team Mika. I got an update on the Superman legacy story. Or now is it just called Superman. Or as it will otherwise be called uh, Superman 2025. Because that's what everyone's going to have to call it. Superman 2025. One second. It's my dad. <sighs> okay. I don't want him to think I ignored him. All right. Okay. Whew. Let's get to today's stories. Try to keep your questions and comments onto the story at hand. I will only really answer your questions and comments until the end of each section. And then at the very end of the stream, you can, um, you can ask me anything that you would like. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you. Papa Randolph, I'll have to tell him you called him that. I don't think I've ever called him Papa. Papa. Thank you, Julio. Papa Randolph. All right. Let's do the first story. It's going to be amazing. I'm excited. All right. Story number one. Boop. Even when I'm sick, I'm still going to boop. All right. So James Gunn posted. Let me show the post. So yesterday, yesterday was Superman's like, Superman apparently has like three birthdays. And yesterday was some obscure birthday that only comes along every four years because it's on leap day. And so everybody was like, oh, is James Gunn going to do something? When, of course, James Gunn had already promised that he wouldn't show the suit for like a year or something. Remember? He was like, oh, I'm going to really sit on this. I'm not going to give anything away. So we waited and we waited and we waited yesterday. And the usual drop times are 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you don't hit the 12 p.m. or even maybe 1 o'clock, maybe if you want to be a little bit late, you know, where, where would that be? Uh, Danny, I, I am excited. I'm sick, Danny. Please keep that in mind when you are gauging my in levels of interest, okay? For sick, I'm super excited, all right? So anyway, uh, he didn't post this until much later in the day, all right, James Gunn. And I think it's similar to how Todd Phillips waited a little bit too late to post the Joker 2 photos. Although, to be fair, because a lot of you are, I know a lot of you are like Superman and James Gunn defenders, this did trend quite a bit. Not only because I think it's a big deal movie, but because, you know, uh, there's two way things can trend, right? One way things can trend is that fans are interested in it. Another way things can trend is if the media is just covering it, like if everybody's covering it. If everybody in the media is covering it, then it trends just for that alone. So the way you can tell is if it stays at the top, right? And to be fair, this Superman news yesterday stayed at the top for a pretty long time. So it wasn't just uh, like uh, media organizations covering the story, but it was also fan excitement. So, because, you know, I guess it is, it is kind of a big change to do the title. But I, the first thing I want to say is that he said, and I just don't know why he always has to be so disingenuous, he said that, oh, you know, we didn't plan to start our photography on this day. Weird. And you're, I mean, maybe they didn't, right? But it just seems so, I mean, I just wouldn't bring it up, 
right? Like, just say in honor of the thing. Like, I don't know why, like, trying to create, like, his own myth, myth right? Like, ah, oh, it just was kismet. Like, who starts shooting on a Thursday anyway? Like, I just feel like it just comes across. I'm not saying it's not true. Maybe they didn't. Maybe it was just an incredible coincidence. But I just feel like, you know, just don't talk about it if you don't, if you, if, I mean, because it's just, it's unbelievable. All right, so then we'll first talk about the title, then we'll talk about the suit, and there's a couple other things I want to talk about, and I'll share my tea with you, all right? All right, so the title has been changed from Superman Legacy to Superman. Now, from a fan perspective, I can kind of understand it being Superman, just Superman. However, I mean, and also once you hear what the story is, he says once he finished the script, like he got it to the final pl place, because he's rewritten it a bunch. Yeah, maybe it does make a little bit more sense to call it Superman, to be honest with you. You really should be calling it Superman Versus, because I think it's going to be a fight movie, from what I heard. So I think Superman Versus, but I mean, how do you not have, oh, thank you, Vera. Uh, it's so nice to see you, Vera. How do you not have, it's like Superman versus Batman, right? Although I think he is borrowing a little bit from Zack Snyder and even Dwayne Johnson's plans that he had. So we're all just going to have to call it Superman 2025. That's just what it's going to be. Uh, as Steven said, it just makes it harder for search engines because you're like, which Superman? Although it's not too, it's better than a long title because I just put 2025 in there. And so that makes it okay. But it's a little bit of a problem from a coverage perspective, to be honest with you. It's just another Superman movie. Uh, but I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I was fine with Legacy. Apparently a bunch of you hated it. But I thought Superman Legacy was a fine title. Uh, all right. So, I mean, we'll see how it turns out. I mean, but at the end of the day, does the movie look good or not? I think that's the most interesting thing, right? All right, so let's look at this little tiny snapshot of the suit. Now, I must say, I like the snow on it. I think the snow looks cool. Uh, obviously, maybe he's visiting the Fortress of Solitude. Who knows what's going on with him? But uh, I like it. I think, I think that that is a very dynamic photo, all right? So I, I think that just from the photo that they shared, I like that. Now let's take a look at it compared to other Superman suits. All right, so there's not much you can tell because it's so close up. It is indeed the logo that Isabella Merced leaked, perhaps intentionally, perhaps by accident, although hers was in black and white, and they switched it to red and yellow. Uh, yellow has been, as you can see, historically part of the costume until Zack Snyder came along, and Zack Snyder doesn't want to have any yellow, thank you very much. Uh, I th but it's a muted yellow. It's a muted, it's a dirty yellow, you know, all right? So uh, there's some talk about like, oh, look, there's a yellow rim around it this time. And you're like, oh, okay, right? Like it's, a, you know, I mean, it's fine to me. I mean, I think there's only so much you can change the Superman suit. I mean, we'll see when we see this full suit, but you can see from all those pictures, that's pretty much what it looks like, you know? <laughs> I mean, one thing I will say is that the image, the crest looks like it covers the entire chest, which I think is important. If you look at Brandon Ruth, if you look at his suit, the logo's too small. So I think that that's, you know, a nice element that, you know, at least it's big. And it does look, it does look very close to Henry Cavill's, to be honest. That's fine, okay? But I mean, it's, I mean, here's the thing. I think it looks good. I mean, I'm not like, oh my God, mind blown, right? But I don't think you could with the Superman uh, suit. I mean, Superman is Superman, right? All right, so here's something else that we got. This was pretty interesting. Rachel Brosnahan, who's looking so Lois, by the way. I'm loving this era of Rachel Brosnahan. Rachel Brosnahan went on her TikTok account, and she was like, I'm part of this party, too. Thank you very much. Because, you know, every time they talk about Superman Legacy, they show James Gunn's picture. And David Cornsweet must be like, what? <laughs> but I guess that so much is riding on, on for James Gunn. But uh, Rachel, uh, I mean, um, Rachel Brosnahan posted this on her TikTok, and you can see Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, and that's David Cornsweet as Superman there on the right. I mean, okay, first off, let me just say, Nicholas Holt and Rachel Brosnahan look incredible. I mean, I'm really impressed with how good Nicholas Holt looks. Nicholas Holt seems to have, like, gained a little bit of weight, a little heft, He's got that look of Lex Luthor, right? You know, in the past, he's been very thin and angular, but he looks a little muscular, a little heavier. He looks great. He looks great. I mean, like, uh, 
Rachel Bros. I've never seen Rachel Brosnahan look that good. I mean, I'm more impressed with her acting for Mrs. Maisel, that she apparently really turned herself into something because she looks so different here. I thought she would just be Mrs. Maisel talking to Superman, but she looks amazing. So Rachel Brosnahan looks amazing, and I think that Nicholas Holt looks amazing. However, I think that David Cornsworth doesn't look so good. Uh, I think that's one of the problems when you have... Um, the cast take their own publicity photos. There's no PR person going, the star of the movie looks weak. Let's take another video until he looks good. And David, could you, I don't know, show a little hair, lift your head up a little bit. And he does look a lot like Henry Cavill, to be honest. I mean, he's fine. I mean, again, he's fine, you know. But I mean, he does look very much like Henry Cavill. But I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. No one's looking at him in the photo because Lois and Lex look so good. You're like... You guys look like you came right out of the comic book. It's amazing. So I will say, I think James Gunn nailed that casting. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so let me tell you about the story, which when I tell you about the story, it's going to make a heck of a lot more sense. I think it's interesting what I've heard, the latest. So changes have been made. They took the Middle East storyline conflict out, and they put in Eastern Europe, okay? So... Uh, you know, I had thought before that it was going to be very much focused on the conflict, that the the movie would be very message heavy. And maybe at one point it was, because, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was very message heavy. But I heard the latest is that it's very simplified and stripped down, and that the story is basically Lex Luthor manages to paint Superman as a villain, and that causes all these heroes to fight him. And so it's a fighting movie. You know, it's like Batman v Superman, but even more. So Superman's going to be fighting. Uh, that's why you bring it. And then it, suddenly this makes more sense. That he's going to be having one or teamed up fights against these characters. He can't fight Batman again because he already fought him, fought him in the, the Batman v Superman movie. So I think that's an interesting idea. Uh, I think that it would be, I don't, it might skew a little younger. That might be one of the problems about it. Uh, but, you know, I had always said I thought, like, a fight movie would be a great way to clear the palate. Remember I was talking about that? And that's right, Degai, uh, um, guy uh, Tai. That's what uh, Dwayne Johnson wanted to do. It's, it's right, also Ben 10, very similar to, ba- a super, uh, to the Marvel Civil War movie, you know, Captain America Civil War, with all the heroes fighting each other. Everybody loved that. Uh, but I think, like, you know, Dwayne Johnson wanted to do a fight movie. He wanted to do basically Batman... I mean, Justice League versus Suicide Squad going after, you know, fighting over, you know, Black Adam. And I had thought that was a pretty good idea. And, you know, of course, it reminds me of Injustice, uh, Injustice 3. You know, maybe that'll be, you know, we don't know when we're getting the next entry. uh, But, you know, that's what Injustice is, hero fighting hero. And so that would also tie in very well if that that came to be. Uh, And then also it makes you feel totally different about how Supergirl might come into the story. What if Supergirl is going to come in for a fight assist. You know, not to have a heart-to-heart, not to have an end credit scene, but maybe she comes in for a fight assist because maybe one of these people proves to be a little bit too much and who's going to assist Superman but his cousin. And so you might have that kind of a situation. Uh, That's interesting to me. I think that's a solid idea. The only question is, that's funny, Juan Gabriel, Batman versus misinformation, or in this case, Superman versus misinformation, right? Superman versus fake news. He's like, I'm not evil. Why do I have to fight all you guys? But that's interesting. Now, of course, this movie would then live or die by the quality of the fights. Now, as I said, it could potentially limit the audience a little bit because, you know, fighting, I think, skews a little younger maybe. I don't know if people who like Silver Age Superman are going to want to just see him have a slugfest with characters they don't recognize. Uh, And then also, uh, can James Gunn deliver a good fight. We're, we're not quite at questions yet. Just hold on a second. Uh, Vicente, okay, Vicente says, maybe that's why James Gunn isn't using the more famous Green Lanterns and Hawkgirl. Maybe these are red shirts. Well, Superman's not going to kill anybody. Maybe Lex might come in and kill somebody and then blame it on Superman. Uh, that's right. You know, there would be shades of Russia, right? Misinformation. That's interesting. That's it. That is interesting. You know, you can still make it topical. Uh, but uh, can James Gunn deliver a good fight sequence? I think he can deliver pretty good action. I thought some of the fight scenes in the last Guardians of the Galaxy were very good, but they're not like John Wick level, you know? I don't know if he's an... I don't know. He would have to 
I'm not, you know, he might level up as a filmmaker. I think he's already leveled up as a filmmaker substantially. So maybe this is his next evolution. Maybe he's been studying fight movies. He had a lot of time during the strike. And that's right, Mika. I was, I have in my notes, what about Peacemaker versus Rick Flagg? Peacemaker versus Rick Flagg was a very interesting fight, and it was filmed very nicely. The helmet shot, as Elia just pointed out. But it was more about what that fight stood for than the fight itself. I don't think anybody remembers any shot, any, any moments of that fight besides the helmet shot and them just standing across from each other saying some pretty choice words. I, don't, I mean, it wasn't like John Wick. It's not like Chad Stahelski came in, is coming in here and, and directing this. I mean, I don't think anybody would say that any James Gunn movie is particularly well known for its action. Uh, I think he's capable as an action director for sure. I thought that uh, Adam Warlock had some Superman moves. But if you're going to do a movie like this, it would, it would require a significant amount of action. Uh, I do feel that this is one of those instances, we'll see how it turns out, but maybe James Gunn should have just written the script and hired somebody else to direct it. Uh, did he have to just absolutely take on everything, right? He's producing it, he's directing it, he's writing it. You know, he's going to, you know, he hasn't spread the blame around to anybody else. He's going to live or die. I mean, I guess maybe that's fine, you know, because it is going to be how the future of his DC is decided. So I can see him maybe not wanting to put it in anybody else's hands. But I think it'd be pretty safe in Chad Stahelski's hands, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'd be like, I think it'll be okay. Uh, Stephen says, James Gunn's heroes thus far have been more grounded, not powers. Yeah, I think Gunn really has interesting takes on characters and he can get into their heads. Uh, I don't always like the decisions that he makes, but I certainly think that's a skill that he has. And I think that he would have an interesting, I'm sure these characters will have interesting discussions. And that's right, Ben, when, where will the fights be? You know, he could really take them to some really interesting locations. Each fight, just like a video game, could be in a different location. So that's what I heard is the latest version of the story. I think it's very simple, but maybe that's good. Simple like the title. And that's why you can see I think Superman is maybe a better title for the movie because it's just Superman fighting people. You know, what's the legacy part of that? He's obviously going to win all his fights. I mean, although, of course, the reason you bring in Metamorpho, the guy on the right, played by Noho Hank from Barry, is that Metamorpho can create many elements, including Kryptonite. So it would be difficult to fight him. So I think this is, I got to tell you, it's a very safe bet. It's a very safe choice. It could limit the film in terms of its appeal. And I think it really depends on whether or not James Gunn can pull it off. But if he can pull it off, I think it could be pretty good. I mean, I think a lot of us fans would certainly enjoy it. And remember we talked, that's, you guys brought up the Russo brothers, and that's a really interesting point. The Russo brothers are famous or infamous, if you're Steven Soderbergh, for making movies that have incredible action set pieces. And the stuff in between matters, maybe doesn't matter. Remember Steven Soderbergh has that famous quote of being at the airport and seeing a guy in his 30s watching one of the Russo Brothers movies and just fast-forwarding to the action sequences to rewatch them. And Steven Soderbergh was like, ah, film society. He called up Marty Scorsese, and they had a good cry together. I'm just making that last part up. <laughs> but, you know, maybe James Gunn saw that and was like, well, maybe I can cre Maybe James Gunn said, hey, I could create the action se sequences, and then I could do better in-betweens. And I, I think there's a chance he could pull it off. And then, then the only concern would be, is Superman well cast, which I'm still not convinced of? And uh, would that maybe make some older viewers, will make the movie skew a little bit too young? But maybe it'll make up for it with repeat viewing. Let's see how Dune does. All right, any questions or comments about this? Existential prophet thinks Steven Soderbergh saw him at the airport. That would be hilarious. Danny says that they have enough time for filming. Especially, yes, if they just started, this movie's over a year away. And they work on VFX as the film is shot. Just so you know. Hey, 80s model. Thank you. One, we don't know the budget, but I'm sure it's substantial. Movies, TV reviews. You can always fit Lois in there. She's covering it. 
She looks so great. How did you not want her there? I'd be like, I just think Lois should be here because she's awesome. She even says this sounded better as a sequel to me. This universe hasn't established her Superman's heroics or character. Well, I think this is going to establish it. And the fact that he's so new is the reason that he, he can be... Like, if Superman had been around for a while, nobody would believe Lex Luthor. They'd be like, you're full of shit, Lex. Let's go beat him up again. But instead they were like, oh, I think Superman might be evil. Let's go take him on. Who just said that? There was a comment I wanted to see. Where'd it go? Damn it. Somebody said no super suit for Lex. Couldn't agree more. Lex better not be wearing that damn suit. I hate that super suit for Lex. I never want to see it on him. Big Red, you didn't get a member greeting. I apologize. Welcome to the party. Ricardo, it better be PG-13. No way this is going to be R-rated. You can't make a Superman movie R-rated. They got to sell the toys. Hey, I Heart Movies, welcome back. All right. I think we're ready for the next story, right? You guys are ready? Oh, that's okay, Danny. Thanks for apologizing. Don't worry about it. I get a little sensitive about Superman because some gun fans are assholes. All right, one second. All right, hold on. All right, you ready? Yeah, SMR Goose, Lois looks so good. I can't believe how good Lois looks. And I'm a big Lois Lane fan. I'm so happy. Rachel Brosnahan looks amazing. All right. Let's move on to the next story of the day. Story number two. Boop. All right, yesterday was a very big day for social media posts. All right, so not only, <laughs> not only did James Gunn and Rachel Brosnahan decide to post stuff, but Jared Leto is still alive. You did not destroy him. <laughs> he's posting. He's acting like nothing ever happened. He's, I can't believe he's still in Tron 3, much less the star of it. And he gave us our first look at Tron Ares. Well, I do like Jared Leto. To be fair, I don't know what he's been accused of doing. So, I don't know. But I do actually enjoy Jared Leto quite a bit. So, it's basically, yeah, it's a butt shot. That's right, existed prophet, existential prophet. Is that Nightwing in there? But anyway, let's see, I'm going to ask what you guys think of Jared Leto. I didn't do a poll before. What do you think of Jared Leto? Hate him. Depends on project. And then I think he's great. And then we'll do a fourth one. Huge fan for anyone who's a Jared Leto head still. I mean, I've seen him in such good projects lately. Oh, by the way, anyone can vote in a poll. Anyone can vote in a poll. You don't have to be a member to vote in a poll. All right, so it looks exactly like Tron Legacy, only it's red. All right. Last time they were what, like green and yellow, blue and yellow? Now there's red. Blue and yellow makes green when those two teams fought. They made green. When you go ride the ride, one of the teams is green on the ride because Enterprise sponsors it. And green is their color. All right, so anyway, Jared Leto is like, who's ready for this movie? This, by the way, also comes out in 2025. They haven't picked an exact date yet, though. It just will be coming out in 2025. I think this first look is only okay. 
because who knows what it looks like. Uh, Rob, Rob McDoodle, I agree. Oh, who know who said that? Yeah, Rob McDoodle. I agree. The first 20 minutes of Tron Legacy are pretty good. And then it just becomes an awful, awful movie. But I thought it was not bad. It certainly was very cool and had great music. So I can see why Disney's trying to bring it back. Uh, we talked about the other day how Sean Bailey came into the company producing this movie, and now it's going to be his last movie on the way out. And then also, as I just said, they have these theme park attractions that are very popular. I rode that, that ride. It is too short, but I still enjoyed it. I like being in the world of Tron. I think it's good. All right, let me give me a moment. All right, I'm going to close the poll. Last chance to vote. Mm, all right, here we go. Rashad says, needs more bubble in the butt. That's hilarious. It must be Jared Leto. All right, but I think Jared Leto would put more bubble in his butt. He's like, I need butt padding. All right, what, I mean, Mark Ruffalo said he had butt padding in Poor Things, which I thought was hilarious. He told that to Mark uh, Ruffalo. So butt pads already exist. doesn't need to be invented. So what did you think of Jared Leto? 59% think depends on the project. Oh, that's promising for Disney. Disney's like, excellent. 26% of you, though, hate him. Wow, that's pretty big. I should have said hate him, but we'll still watch him. That's hilarious, because I know for some of you that's the case. I'm going to do that as the next poll. All right, uh, 11% think he's great, but only 2% think they're a huge fan. All right, let me, let me ask you this one. Will you see Tron Legacy? Oh, Tron Aries. Heck yeah. Uh, yes, despite Leto. And then need to see trailer, of course. And then no thank you. All right, again, anybody can vote in the poll. Anyone. Now, to me, the biggest problem with this is that Joaquin Roning is directing it. Now, Joaquin Roning, I can't believe he got hired again. He directed the last Pirates of the Caribbean movie, you know, when they, with uh, uh, Javier Bardem, and also Maleficent 2. I, I mean, come on, man. I mean, like, why would anybody be like, let's have a complete set? You know, he needs three movies so we can do the set of not great films. Blair Wraith says, I need to bring back Michael Sheen as the owner of the nightclub. He did steal the movie. He was incredible. Uh, all right, but the cast, let's take a look at the cast. And I'll also tell you the story for those of you who haven't heard. All right, so there's the cast. So Tron Ares is about a computer program called Ares. Uh, I guess from Greek myth. I forget which one Ares is. Which one is Aries again? It's not one of the cool ones. Who's Aries? What did he do? Let's see the fighter guy. God of War? Oh, I can't believe I forgot that. From Wonder Woman. I am sick. That's a little cooler. So he's a God of War program who goes out into the real world. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. Okay, I kind of like that. Now they have my attention, right? All right, so Jared Leto plays this computer program who goes out into the real world. And I wonder what he can do in the real world besides make your cell phone ring or pay for stuff with his hand. <laughs> I'd be like, what are you going to do, man? I mean, I guess he can, like, control trains and stuff like that. But, like, and send you a text message just thinking it. But, like, what's he going to do to me? Like, he's not going to be able to have all these cool lights around him in the real world. Unless he designs his apartment that way and says, come meet me at my place. So we'll see. But yeah, so that's who Jared Leto's playing. Then you can see Evan Peters, Greta Lee. Uh, the cast is amazing, Jad. Uh, Jody Turner-Smith, Cameron Monaghan, Monaghan, who is also not only in the Star Wars video games, uh, Callus Clestis or whatever, but he also was a Joker on the Gotham show. And then uh, he and Evan Peters are like the same guy. I think it's incredible that they're going to both be in the movie. Uh, Dylan Reese says, commentary on AI. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, Cal Kestis. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, Sarah Desjardins, who, well, she kind of done like not too much stuff. But Gillian Anderson 
And then Hassan Minaj is an interesting person to put in this because he's, of course, uh, from The Daily Show. So I, I think it sounds pretty good, you know? I mean, I don't think there's any way that I wouldn't see a movie about Tron just because I like big picture stuff. And I, I think Jared Leto can be interesting. So, and I like Evan Peters. And I like Greta Lee. I like the whole cast. So, I, I mean, I wonder if Evan Peters or Cameron Monaghan, Monahan are playing like uh, computer programmers or something, right? Uh, and the, also, Jeff Bridges has to be in this. He has, it hasn't been announced, but I don't understand how Jeff Bridges is not, you know. Also, by the way, I would change this title to Tron God of War. I think that people are going to be standing on the marquee and they're not going to be whipping out their, uh, their Greek, Greek god knowledge, right? They're going to be like, Tron Ares sounds kind of intellectual, but in fact it's Tron God of War. So I would do Tron God of War. That, that, or Tron War, as not modern art history said. That's a good idea too. Franco says, Aries is like super famous though. <laughs> what are you, Aries publicist? I love it, Franco. That's so funny. Well, I just blanked on it and I really know my Greek mythology. I'm also very sick. But I, I oh, and look at SMR Goose. Or everyone can just be better with their mythology. Well, you know, Disney's not going to sit up there and be like, I wish we'd made more money, but at least we took a stand for the importance of knowing your mythology. Ah, uh, that's hilarious. You guys are so funny. I love it. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, I just so I'll call it. Uh, oh, bye, Fr. Frank Frankenstein. All right. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this, David? I like that Tron out of battery. That's hilarious. Tron no signal, no Wi-Fi. Defeated by crappy Wi-Fi. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the stream. Oh, that's funny, the Salvadorian. Tron arse because of uh, the photo. That's pretty funny. They'll get you in there one way or another. Although the, Greek, the Greeks liked a lot of arse. Oh, it all comes around together. Hmm. Oh, thanks, Franco. Thank you for gifting those memberships. I'm eating um, roasted almonds. Delicious. All right. Let's go to the next story. I'm glad you guys appreciate my saucy humor. That's my improv background. All right. No, they're salted. They're salted. I'm not crazy. Blair Wraith says, it's such a shame Daft Punk won't be back. They broke up before the movie. Ah, oh, did they break up? They should come back for this. I'd be like, or at least one of you. I'll take daft or punk. All right. Will you see Tron Aries? 43% of you need to see the trailer. A whopping 29% of you say no thank you. Wow, you've been burned. 16% are like, heck yeah. And then 10% are like, yes, but I really am going to hate it because I don't like Jared Leto. Interesting. Well, at least like 70% of you are going to maybe go. All right. I'm glad you guys like my jokes. Makes me very happy. Thank you. All right. Story number three. Oh, wait. Green Lantern Light said, it reminds me of Americans, American God's Crispin Glover's Mr. World character. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't want this to be like Neil Gaiman wrote it because Neil Gaiman, for the most part, is totally inaccessible. Like, I think I liked Sandman, but I couldn't get through American Gods. I was like, what the hell are you talking about, Neil? All right. Boom, baby. Dune 2, woohoo! It's off to a roaring start. Here are the numbers and the comparisons. And then I'll tell you a little bit of those, what's going on. Hey, Infinite Gamer, you did get a membership. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah, I like Good Omens too, Mika. You're right. But uh, towards the last season of Good Omens, I also don't really know what's going on. All right, so is the chewing bothering you with the microphone? Is it okay? I just got nervous about that. Listen to my chewing. Oh. Steve's like, that's a very polite kind of. That's very funny. All right, I'll stop. You guys are nice. All right. 
All right, so I need a soft snack apparently for uh, for live streams. Hey, Billy, thanks for gifting those memberships. All right, so Thursday night, you probably already read it. All right, so Thursday night box office, Dune Part Two, twelve million dollars, two million from last weekend's IMAX, which is interesting to see that one showing of IMAX on a Sunday night across the country could generate two million dollars. So it really did ten. And then you can kind of see some recent movies for comparison, right? So uh, since it only really did 10, it's actually a little bit lower than it seems. Uh, oh, Danny, I don't think this is low. I think this is good. So uh, The Hobbit, this is interesting. The Hobbit had 13 million Thursday night, but only got to 84. Thank you, Green Lantern's Light. Only got to 84.6. But yet Deadpool did 12.7 on Thursday night and got all the way up to 132. So that, that's really interesting. You know, like if things are one lo uh, front loaded. Also, The Hobbit was a much longer movie. But yet at the same time, The Hobbit, I mean, Dune is on a ton of screens. Oh, thanks, Franco. I would agree with SMR Goose that I think Oppenheimer is the comp. All right, so there you can see Oppenheimer at 10.5, which opened at 82.4. And look at Five Nights at Freddy's. That also opened with 10.3 on Thursday night, although very, well, it was weekend front-loaded. That opened at 80. And then John Wick opened with 18.8.9, 8.9, and got up, hey, hey, love to travel, and got up to 73.8. So basically what you're looking at here is that Dune Part 2 is going to open at around 80. I think it will do that, which is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, the question is, how front-loaded is it? That's the only thing we have to be nervous about. Will people go for multiple viewings? Some information that's already come back from the theaters is that while the premium screens are selling out and doing incredibly well, regular screens are only doing okay. That was the word that was used to describe it. Regular screen sales are only okay. So, and some of you have reported to me that you're at your theater and there's nobody there. You know, some of you are sold out, some of you it's empty. So we'll see, what, uh, we'll see how it shakes out. My question is, what is the second weekend going to look like? It's going up against Kung Fu Panda 4. Uh, or Kung, uh, Kung Fu Panda, as I call it on Movie Map. Uh, so will people go for multiple viewings? Is, is Denis Villeneuve tapped in to the Nolan fan base? I think that's very possible. But then why did Oppenheimer leg out the way that it did? Was it because that it opened opposite Barbie? Was it because of the history element that it was a true story? I don't know if Dune, you know, Dune is science fiction. And it, it's not, it's great. It's awe-inspiring science fiction. Oh, by Ross. But it's not like fun science fiction. It's not like Star Wars, right? So, and I also think that Dune might skew a little younger than Oppenheimer. I think everybody, the whole planet was like, I think we should see the story about how the atomic bomb was created. Uh, and then with Wonka legging out, Mika, Wonka legged out because it was a great family holiday film. People were like, what should we do? We're like, I know, let's go see Wonka. So that's the reason. So I am curious to see how the film does, but it's off to a very, very good start, and we'll have a very good discussion on Sunday. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this story before we go to the Ask Me Anything? Sam Makra, the runtime for Dune 2 is 2 hours and 45 minutes, but you have to add 30 minutes for trailers and commercials. Although they're debuting a new, a new Nicole Kidman spot today. So get ready. There's three of them. Which one will you get? Blair Wraith says, me, the popcorn bucket, and my girlfriend. You're going, you're going, you're going as a threesome there, huh? Uh, let's see here. Steven says, Denis doesn't have the following of Nolan. But the, maybe Dune does. Maybe Dune itself does. Mary Rose, I don't think Kung Fu Panda 4 will make a billion, but I think it'll make a nice chunk of change. Well, let's see. Let's see if it's any good. Manny says there was no new Nicole Kidman ad. What a ripoff. Um, but, I mean, maybe it's just not everywhere. But they announced it. AMC said it was coming out today. Oh, but Rudy got it. Rudy got the new Nicole Kidman ad. Boy, how that's so great for Nicole Kidman. That, you know, she's been, she's an Oscar-winning actress. She's been in all these 
boundary pushing movies and she ends up being the AMC lady. Hey, don't knock it. I'm sure she's getting paid a tremendous amount of money to do that. I can't wait to see what she's wearing in the new ad. <laughs> uh, my friends bought merch with the sayings on it on it from that opening. Dory Does Voices says, I just love seeing her watch those random clips in the theater by herself. Yeah, I also think it's hilarious she's not eating any food. She's like, just this beverage, thank you. And they're like, you won't even hold a popcorn? And she's like, it would be disingenuous. <laughs> Adam DiSabato says she's wearing the same suit, different catchphrase. It better clearly be a different frickin' ad. Don't spoil it, the guy. Don't read the guy Ty's thing. I don't, you don't even want to see it first. I'm pretty annoyed if it just looks exactly the same. Motivator. Oh, that's funny. Motivator Crew says, became a member today. Woohoo! Going to see Dune 2 and IMAX this afternoon. Welcome to the group, Motivator. I love your name. I hope you have a great time seeing uh, Dune. And thank you. That was very generous of you. Uh, Big Red says, sounds like they just used some outtakes. You know, I wouldn't be surprised because I can't. How could she look exactly the same? I feel cheated. Danny says, do you think Dune 2 can get to a billion? No, I don't. But I think it can get higher than the last Dune. All right, uh, let's move on to Ask Me Anything. I think you guys are done with this story. All right. Booyah! I like Cyborg. That's right, Sensation. You could ask me anything for 10 minutes till 2 o'clock. Oh, Mika says, Dan Lin chose Netflix over DC. What are your thoughts on that? That's right. Dan Lin is now the head of film at Netflix. He had almost gotten the DC job. I think Netflix pays so well that I'm not surprised that he took it. I'm surprised there are so few people in Hollywood that they have to just keep considering the same executives for jobs. But it is fine. Tiff says, did you see the new Last of Us Season 2 casting? No, I didn't. Who is it? Let me see. Somebody, maybe I got the thing in my email. Who is it? I don't see it. Shay says, I was in my sold out showing of Dune last night and a massive fight broke out because people were talking. There were like eight people fighting and they had to stop the movie. Oh, that's horrible, Shay. That sucks. Glad that you were okay, though. Oh. This is why earlier showings in the day are better. Oh, Teddy Gabriel. I oh, love it. Who's she playing? I love Teddy Gabriel. Anything that she's in makes me happy. Who is she playing? Oh, and Danny Ramirez as well. I like Danny Ramirez. Oh, Nora. Danny said Dora. I was like, Dora, the explorer? What's she doing in The Last of Us? Oh, that's great. I got to watch those Last of Us cutscenes, but I don't want to watch it too early because then I'll forget it. I want to make sure I, I got to time it just right. Cody says, Dune poll, who has seeing it more than once? I'm well, we don't know yet, Cody. People have to see it before they know if they're going to see it more than once. Thank you, Mr. Real Shane. Oh, it's all Abby's crew, says Manny. Uh, oh, oh, no, don't be on the evil side. I still think that the casting of Abby was a mistake. We'll see. I'm going back, Steven. How have you heard anything about it? If the Max show about the Max show Dune Prophecy? No, I have not. I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, Keith says, "Will you cover Bad Batch at the end of the season?" I gotta tell you, Keith. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, the interest in Bad Batch has been so low. I would say it almost borders on non-existent. Uh, let's see here. Timodoc says, Grace, I just accepted an amazing job offer. My position was eliminated in early February, and every time I got discouraged, I thought of your advice to keep looking forward. Oh, yay! 
Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so glad I could help you and inspire you. And good for you because you're the one who actually did it. You did the hard work and it worked out. Oh, that's wonderful. And see, you got an even better job. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I could help you out on that and keep, you, keep your spirits up. Uh, Chris Kahn says, thoughts on Destin Daniel Cretton doing a, a Naruto movie. I don't know anything about Naruto. I don't even know that it existed. So I have to look into it. Uh, let's see here. Adam's Fear, I haven't watched Shogun because I'm not going to cover it and I have a lot of, I don't know. They annoyed me a little bit. Let's see here. Mr. Poppy gifted a membership. Ah, uh, thank you, Mr. Poppy. I like your name. Uh, no FX says, Grace, do you think Deadpool 3 can perform as a billion dollar box office considering the tremendous amount of leaks? I do. Almost all of No Way Home leaked, and it made close to $2 billion. So I think it can do well. Mary Rose, I do watch Hacks, and I am excited for that show to come back. I like Hacks. Space Jace, I will definitely cover the Street Fighter movie. If it's a major movie releasing in theaters, I shall cover it. Let's see, your salty snack has another Dune horror story. Saw Dune 2 last night, and right at the moment of the height of the climax, someone in the projector room covered the lens, and the screen went black for five minutes. Oh, my God, what's going on at these theaters? That's right. Yeah, Leo, we wear pink on Fridays. Uh, let's see here. I think I missed something here. Elise said, what happened to the queer subtext in Dune? Well, it's hard for me to talk about that because I'm not familiar with the source material enough to know that it was missing in the first place. But you're not the first person to have brought that up to me. Uh, I'm surprised no, not more people have brought it up. Uh, and I, I think it's interesting that Denis Villeneuve, uh, Villeneuve took it out. Vera says, Danny, do you think that Zendaya and Timmy are legit, legit stars now? That's an interesting question, Vera. I definitely think that they're movie stars in terms of publicity, but I don't think the jury is in yet on whether or not they can sell tickets, either one of them. If Dune does well with Wonka and then Dune, I think Timothy Chalamet will be looking pretty good. Although I don't think that people came to any of these movies for him but they might leave as a fan of Timothy Chalamet's. I certainly have. As for Zendaya, let's see how Challengers does. Uh, that's going to give you an answer on Zendaya real quick. But they're certainly, uh, you know, social media stars. I've seen a couple people online saying that they and Tom Holland are a little overexposed. And you got to be careful about that. Uh, Mark Acosta says, Grace, I know you weren't a fan of the DC shows on the CW, but what are your thoughts on Superman 25 being the reason that Superman and Lois was axed? Uh, I feel bad for the fans of that show, but it makes sense. You know, I think DC has to stop doing this where they divide their audience. If you want to like support Superman, there's only one, and it's this one. Uh, Jad says, since you're feeling sick, maybe you should relax and enjoy some Shogun. It's really terrific television. Uh, all right, maybe I will, Jad. Maybe I will. Michael McKenna says, I hope you feel better. Thoughts that Marvel has greenlit Young Avengers movie. Have you watched Shogun? Did they greenlight the Young Avengers movie? Was that like a headline somewhere? Let me see. How dare they greenlight a movie on a Friday? Mm, I don't see this headline. Oh, uh, let's see here. J. Scott Garlby says, working while sick. Grace, you are an inspiration. Aw, thank you. These stories were too big. And I couldn't not only, I couldn't, I already am only giving you two streams this week. I could not give you three. Oh, let's see here. Yar says, hey, Grace, saw Dune yesterday in Mexico. Uh, a packed theater. You could see the excitement in the fans' faces. But let's say I also saw lots of sleepy faces. Worried about audience reception. Yeah, I agree, Yeah, Some people are going to love this. 
And some people are going to be like, what the hell? What was everybody talking about? I've already seen that in the comments on my videos. Some people are like, yes, it's so good. And other people are like, it's horrible. Why is it the same stupid thing as the last one? So let's see here. Sam Makra, the review embargo for Kung Fu Panda is on Wednesday, March 6th. Brock52 says, I was watching Big Hero 6 with my five daughters the other day when I realized that as a Marvel property, Hero and Baymax could definitely make an appearance in Secret Wars. I don't think that'll ever happen, but I love that you're watching the movie with your daughters. I think that's really nice. Tanvi says, what movies are you looking forward to most this summer aside from Deadpool 3? Uh, thank you, Tanvi. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, you know, Fall Guy looks really good to me. Uh, a lot of stuff this summer. I think this summer's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to Ghostbusters. Oh, I missed some questions. I'm coming back. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Green Lantern's Light. Any new details on House of the Dragon? No, I haven't heard anything yet. I mean, obviously, we now all know it's coming out in June. Why? It's coming out in June, the same month as the boys. Whatever, man. Uh, Dave B. Jones says, I've seen the rumors that Star Wars The Acolyte is going to release. That's going to be in June, too? Blah, 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 blah. All right, that's fine. I, I like it. It'll be give me a lot to do. Uh, let's see here. I, heart, I have not heard about that myself, though. I Heart Movie says, we'll be seeing Dune 2 tomorrow, and I am so excited. Oh, huzzah! And then uh, Brothers Brock 52. And Jonathan says, hi, Grace. Should Warner Brothers sell the Lord of the Rings rights since The Hobbit had a large Thursday opening? Maybe give it to another company. No way! They're making their Lord of the Rings animated movie. I'd be like, you'll pry this... You'll pry this IP out of my cold, dead hands. Adam is fierce as to general audiences have bad taste. Of course not. Don't ever think that way. I think that's a negative way to think. All right, it's 2 o'clock. Shout outs. Where are you? What are you doing? Let me just say hi, and then I gots to go. Thank you, Rashad. Where are you? What are you doing? Sensation is going to go see Dune 2 right after this in IMAX. Sam Mocker is making a steak pie for dinner. Steak and pie. That's a Friday meal for sure. I Heart Movies is in Ohio sitting on the couch. Oh, the Salvadorian says, hey, if you're watching this, why not like and subscribe? I second that. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Chico just got a, a Popeye's lunch. Uh, Derek says, dreary New Orleans. Oh, I'm sorry it's dreary there today. It's usually so great. Let's see here. Thank you, iHeartMovies. SMR Goose says, off work early. That's always a good thing. Sweet freedom. Jermaine says, hey, Grace, just want to say hi. I've been watching your channel since you're reporting about the Ghost in the Shell movie. Oh, that was fun. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Jermaine. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Keith says, enjoying the stream of my week off from college. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Tiff is playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth out today. Oh, that's right. Everybody was making a big deal about that game coming out. There's a lot of people's weekends right there. Uh, let's see here. Daniel Ems is about to work, then have lunch in L.A. Well, Danny, as always, is coming from Guatemala. Uh, Adam Sphere is like, you should really watch Shogun now. <laughs> okay, Adam Sphere. Uh, Big Witch is cleaning the house so I can finally watch Dune Part 1. I like that you set a goal for yourself so that you can't watch Dune until you finish cleaning the house. That's how stuff gets done. Uh, hey, Matt in Michigan. And Vera says, lying in bed after a 12-hour shift. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a long shift, Vera. Good for you. Trying to avoid Dune 2 spoilers. Oh, you can do it. You can do it, Vera. I'm sure you're seeing the movie soon. And then Targaryen Poppy says, greetings from Miami. Enjoying the stream while eating some Chick-fil-A for lunch. Feel better, Grace. Aw, thank you. Eat some pho. Uh, yeah, that's a, not a bad idea. And then Michael McKenna says in Chicago making some Cajun pasta for lunch. Oh, wow. Well, Elia says spring cleaning just feels right. That's hilarious. I have to do some spring cleaning this weekend myself. Oh, look, Ben Pello is also sick. Feel better, Ben. I hope we both feel better. Well, Steven Turner says at brunch, seeing Dune 2 at 3. Ah, great day planned, Steven. Well, Tanvi is heading to bed. It's 1230 here in India. Ah, thanks for staying up, Tavi. Thank you for keeping my spirits up. While my dad, oh, while your dad is having health problems. Oh, I'm sorry, Tanvi. I'm, I'm sure that can be difficult, but, you know, I'm glad I can help you keep your spirits up because you in turn want to keep your dad's spirits up, but 
I'm really glad you're taking care of yourself, too. And then Dolly Parton's watching. Dolly Parton's is knitting myself a hat while working from home. Oh, I love it. I love it. You're working on yourself, Dolly. And then Terry says, thanks for being on today, Grace. You're a true professional. Oh, thank you. My pleasure, Terry. You guys, you guys uh, made me feel better. All right, I'll see you all on Sunday for Movie Math, and then we got a whole new week of fun after that. Okay, everybody, bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.